I first met in person with Mary E in the summer of 2007. I had arranged with her husband of 15 years, Terence, to see her for an interview. Mary had initially agreed, since I was not a newsman but rather an immature writer gathering information for a few early college assignments, and if all went according to plan, some pieces of fiction. We scheduled the interview for a particular weekend when I was in Chicago on unrelated business, but at the last moment Mary changed her mind and locked herself in the couple's bedroom, refusing to meet with me. For a half an hour I sat with Terence as we camped outside the bedroom door and listened in taking notes while he attempted to things Mary said made little sense but fit the pattern I was expecting. Though I could not see her, I could tell from her voice that she was crying. More often than not, her objections to speaking with me centered around an inherent diatribe on her dreams, her nightmares. Terence apologized profusely when he seized the exercise, and I did my best to take it and tried. Recall that I wasn't a reporter in search of a story, but merely a curious young man in search of information. Besides, I thought at the time I could perhaps find another, similar case if I put my mind and resources to it. Mary E. was a CIS Oprah's small Chicago based bulletin board system in 1992 when she first encountered Smile JPEG, and her life changed forever. She and Terrence had been married for, about, for only five months. Mary was one of the estimated 400 people who saw the image when it was first posted on Hyperlink on BBS, though she is only one who has spoken openly about the experience. The rest have remained anonymous, or perhaps dead. In 2005, when I was only in 10th grade, Smile JPEG was first brought to my attention by a burgundy interest in web based phenomena. Mary was the most often cited victim of what is sometimes referred to as Smile Dog. The being Smile JPEG is reputed to display. What caught my interest, other than the obvious macabre elements of the cyber legend and the proclivity towards such thing, was a sheer lack of information usually to the point that people don't believe it even exists other than as a rumor or hoax. It is unique because though the entire phenomenon centers on a picture file, that file was nowhere to be found on the internet. Certainly many photo manipulated simicra litter the web, showing up with the most frequency of sites such as the image board 4chan, particularly the X-Focus paranormal suborb. It is suspected these are fakes because they do not have the effects the true smile JPEG is believed to have. Namely, sudden onset temporal lobe epilepsy and acute anxiety. This purported reaction in viewers is one of the reasons the phantom like smile JPEG is regarded with such disdain, since it is patiently absurd, though, depending on whom you ask, the re reluctance and acknowledged smile JPEG's existence might be just as much out of fear as it is out of disbelief. Neither smile JPEG nor smile dog is mentioned anywhere on Wikipedia. Though the website features articles on such other, perhaps more scandalous, shock sites as Hello JPEG or Two Girls One Cup, any attempts to create a page pertaining to Smile JPEG is summarily deleted by any of the Encyclopedia's many admins. Encounters with Smile JPEG are the stuff of internet legend. Mary E's story is not unique. There are unverified rumors of Smile JPEG showing up in the early days of Usenet and even one persistent tale that in 2002, a hacker flooded the forums of humor and satire websites something awful with a deluge of Smile Dog pictures, rendering almost half the forums users at the time epileptic. It is also said that in the mid to late 90s, the Smile JPEG circulated on Usenet and as an attachment of a chain email with the subject line, Smile, God loves you. Yes, despite the huge exposure these stunts would generate, these are very few people who admit to have experienced any of them, and no trace of the file or any link has ever been discovered. Those who claim to have seen Smile JPEG often weakly joke that they were far too busy to save a copy of the picture to their hard drive. However, all alleged victims offer the same description of the photo, a dog-like creature, usually described as appearing as similar to a Siberian Husky. Illuminated by a flash of the camera, sits in a dim room. The only background detail is a visible being a human hand extending from the darkness near the left side of the frame. The hand is empty, but is usually described as beckoning. Of course, most attention is given to the dog, or dog creature, as some victims are most certain that others about what they claim to have seen. The muzzle of the beast is repugnantly split in a wide grin, revealing two rows of very white, very straight, very sharp, very human looking teeth. This is of course not a description given immediately after viewing this picture, but rather a recollection of the victims, who claim to have seen the picture endlessly repeated in their mind's eyes during the time they are, in reality, having epileptic fits. 
These fits are reported to continue intermittently, often while the victims sleep, resulting in a very vivid and disturbing nightmares. These may be treated with medicine, though in some senses it is more effective than others. Mary E., I assumed, was not an effective medication. That was why after my visit to her apartment in 2007, I sent out feelers to several folklore and urban legend oriented news groups, websites, and mail lists, hoping to find the name of a suspended victim of Smile JPEG, who found more interest in talking about his experience. For a time, nothing happened in the length of I forgot completely about my pursuits. Since I had begun my freshman year of college and I was quite busy, Mary contacts me via email, however, near the beginning of March 2008. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. What I found was a shrill voice. It was the rake. I can't listen to it long enough to even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard it before, and I now believe that it spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason, the voice on the recorder immediately brings back to that moment. You see, for 15 years, I have been haunted by Smile JPEG. Smile Dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. There is an ineffable quality about my dreams, my nightmares, that makes them completely unlike any real dreams I have ever had. I do not move and do not speak. I simply look ahead, and the only thing ahead of me is the scene from the horrible picture. I see the beckoning hand, and I see Smile Dog. It talks to me. It is not a dog, of course. Though I am not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it, it will leave me alone if only I do as it asks. All I must do is say is spread the word. That is how it phrases its demands. And I know exactly what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. And I could. The week after my incident I received in the mail a manila envelope with no return address. Inside was only a three and a half inch floppy disk it. Without having to check I knew precisely what it was. I thought for a long time about my options. I could show it to a stranger, a co-worker. I could even show it to Terrence. As much as the idea disgusted me, and what would happen then? Well, if Smile Dog kept its word I could sleep, yet if I lied, what would I do? And who was to say something worse would not come to me if I did as the creature asked? So I did nothing for 15 years. Though, I kept the disket hidden amongst my things. Every night for 15 years, Smile Dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For 15 years, I have stood strong. Though there have been hard times, many of my fellow victims on BBS boards where I first encountered Smile JPEG stopped posting. I heard some of them commented su suicide. Others remain completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They are the ones I worry about the most. I sincerely hope you will forgive me, Mr. L. But last summer when you contacted me and my husband about an interview, I was near the breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy disk. I did not care if Smile Dog was lying or not. I wanted to end. You were a stranger, someone I had no connection with, and I thought I would not feel sorrow when you took the disk as part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing. I was plotting to ruin your life. I could not stand the thought, and in fact I still cannot. I am ashamed, Mr. L, and I hope that this warning will dissuade you from further investigation of Smile JPEG. You may in time encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I, then who will be more depraved, someone who will not hesitate to file Smile Dog's orders. Stop while you are still whole. Sincerely, Mary E. Terrence contacted me later that month with the news that his wife had killed herself. While cleaning up the various things she left behind, closing email accounts and the like, he happened upon the above message. He was a man in shambles. He wept as he told me to listen to his wife's advice. He found the disket. He revealed and burned it until it was nothing but a stinking pile of blackened plastic. The part was most disturbing him, however, was how the disket had hissed as it melted, like some sort of animal, he said. I will admit that I was a little uncertain about how to respond to this. At first I thought perhaps it was a joke, with the couple betterly playing with the situation in order to get a rise out of me. A quick check of several Chicago newspapers online opportunities, however, proved that Mary E. was indeed dead. There was of course no mention of suicide in the article. I decided that, for a time at least, I would not further pursue the subject of Smile JPEG, especially since I had finals coming up at the end of May. But the world has odd ways of testing us. Almost a full year after I returned from the distress interview with Mary E., I received another email. Hello. I found our email addresses through a mailing list you profile where you said you are interested in Smile Dog. I saw it is not as bad as everyone says. I've sent it to you here, just spreading the word. The final line showed me to the bone. 
According to my email client, there was one file attachment called, naturally, Smile JPEG. I considered downloading it for some time. It was mostly likely a fake. I imagined it even if it weren't. I was never wholly convinced of Smile JPEG's particular powers. Mary E's account had shaken me. Yes, but she was probably mentally unbalanced anyways. After all, how could a simple image of what Smile JPEG was said to accomplish? What sort of creature was it that could break one's mind with only the powers of his eyes? If such thing were patiently absurd, then why did the legend exist at all? If I downloaded the image, if I looked at it, and if Mary turned out to be correct, if Smile Dog came to me in my dreams, demanding I spread the word, what would I do? Would I live my life as Mary had, fighting against the urge to give it until I died, or would I simply spread the word, eager to be put to rest? And if I chose the latter route, how could I do it? Whom would I burden it in turn? If I went through my earlier attentions to write a short article for me about Smile JPEG, I decided I could attach it to it as evidence. Anyone who read the article, anyone who took interest, would be affected. And even assuming Smile JPEG attached to the email was genuine, would I be capricious enough to save myself in the manner? Could I spread the word? Yes. Yes, I could.